Hey guys, welcome back to Pigskin and Poetry. I'm Coach Ernster, here with another Taylor Swift reaction. I mean, my channel's basically come in a one-stop shop for all the Swifties out there. Uh, you can check out all my other reactions up there. I've done a ton. You know, I haven't loved every uh, Taylor Swift song I've reacted to, but I have liked most of them, and I really did enjoy quite a few of them. Um, you know, certainly some more than others. Um, but here's one that, you know, people have been telling me, hey, you, you know, being an AP English teacher, you really need to check out Folklore. That's where her lyrics start getting really deep. And so today we're going to check out something from Folklore. Um, the person that teaches in the door next to me, I don't know if she wants me to mention her name or not, but she knows who she is. She said, you need to try out this song, Cardigan. Um, and so I'm going to try out Cardigan. Um, let's see what it's all about. I'll do a little lyric breakdown and everything, try to analyze some of the lyrics, AP style at the end. Uh, let's see what this is about. Vintage tea, brand new phone, high heels on, cobblestones. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. It's a pretty good line right there already at the start. When you're young, they assume you know nothing. I can really imagine how, you know, the young people that uh, I, I would say make up most of her fans, although I think, you know, different age groups certainly relate to her music, but I'd, I'd say the majority of her fans are at least younger than I am, uh, although I would, don't think anybody would probably consider me young anymore. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when you're young, they assume you know nothing. That, I think that would kind of resonate with that audience. Let's keep going. Sequin smile, black lipstick, sensual politics. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. That might end up being like a theme of this song then again. I, I thought maybe that was just like a line in the song, but here she is. You know, it's like a refrain. She's repeat, repeated it now. So there's the title of the song. She felt like she was an old cardigan. I'm assuming like some old sweater that maybe you thrown away. I'm assuming this might be about some uh, relationship that was, you know, that she had or maybe, you know, maybe that she didn't have. Um, that teacher that I mentioned before mentioned that some of uh, Taylor Swift's later work got to be a little less uh, autobiography, uh, a little less autobiography, which, um, you know, I'm assuming, you know, she understands heartbreak and I, you know, I think this, uh, this song is kind of heading in that direction. Uh, I, I do like to say not just this image of a foot that you see here, but the imagery in this video is really cool so far. I'm loving, like, I'm a huge fantasy fan. I love Lord of the Rings, those kinds of things. And so when she like crawled into that sort of glowing dresser, I don't know, almost like Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe style, uh, style Chronicles of Narnia, that kind of thing, and came out into this fantasy world, that was pretty cool to me. Uh, let's keep going. To someone's bed You put me on And said I was your favorite A friend to all Is a friend to none Chase two girls Lose the one When you are young They assume you know nothing Alright, so She felt like a cardigan That's thrown under someone's bed and I think bed specifically there, maybe on purpose, because this feels like maybe this is a song about cheating. Um, because she's talking about, like, you know, you try to have more than one, you're going to lose one of them. You know what I mean? You can't have more than one. Uh, so I think that's where she's going with that. Yeah. So there's a certain like innocence to the stuff she's talking about, but the, I, there's a double entendre there. Like she talks about like the innocence that this person had and like, I knew you playing hide and seek, giving me your weekends, like only giving her partially some of the time, you know, hide and seek is traditionally a child's game. And so you have this sort of like imagery and like the symbolism of this child's game, but also the hide and seek of like jumping in between relationships. I can see that work has a double meaning there very easily. Let's keep going.
I do also want to just point out, like musically, uh, compared to some of the other songs I've reacted to from her, uh, like Haunted and even like, I don't know, Tim McGraw and then, you know, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, like, and even I did Cruel Summer recently too, but like this song feels much more mature in a way that's like kind of stripped down and simpler. And I mean, I don't know, I mean, the, tit- the album title is Folklore, so maybe it kind of goes back to these sort of like folksy kind of roots and like, you know, I-, I think of folk music certainly not being like rock and roll or pop or anything that's a lot more like up-tempo and like high energy, and this feels like it fits into that. But this song feels like, like lyrically feels more mature, but I think musically feels a little more mature too. To kiss and call. cool like we have like an inception thing going on here where like she's going like certain like levels deep into this uh fantasy into this dream into this memory like whatever this is kind of going on here uh in in the video and i don't want the video to distract me from the lyrics and things but um but i do really like this video in terms of like the videos i've seen from her this is like up there towards the top of the list i, I like it Stepping on the last train march me like a blood stain I- All right, so there we have an allusion to literature, certainly, about Peter and Wendy. And, you know, that earlier comment I made about, like, the game of hide-and-seek being like a child's game, but also double entendre, uh, you know, uh, Peter and Wendy, that alone brings up, like, a lot of, like, there's a lot of backstory to that, and there's a lot of meaning to that relationship where, you know, Peter wanted to bring Wendy and stay young with her forever and bring her to Neverland and, and never, you know, never you know, grow up and always have fun and all those kinds of things. And Wendy sort of makes the hard decision that she, you know, has to leave Peter at the end because she wants to go home and she wants to grow up. She wants to mature. She wants to move on. And I think, like, I, that's not certainly not lost on me or I'm sure most of the Swifties or the audience out there, but I, I'm, I'm almost positive that's why she chose that specific reference, not just because of that relationship, but because but because of what eventually ha- happens to that relationship. I knew you leaving like a father running like water right? and when you are young they assume you know nothing There's that line again when they are young they assume you know nothing and again the, the concept the motif of youth in this song and like juxtaposed against the sort of like more mature sound of the song Ah, man, really liking this. Like, yeah, the, the, this one's getting up there. And, you know, if I don't have a list or anything of, like, my favorite Taylor Swift songs. But, you know, if I did, this one's got to be in the top three or four, I would bet right now. Let's get to the end. Who knows? It might be all the way up there. But I knew you'd like a tattoo kiss. I knew you'd haunt all of my worries. I don't really know what a tattoo kiss is. Y'all tell me in the comments, what's a tattoo kiss? <laughs> Is that like a young thing? I don't know. The smell of smoke would hang around this long Cause I knew everything when I was young I knew I'd curse you for the longest time Chasing shadows in the grocery line I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired And you'd be standing in my front porch lot And I knew you Alright, so, I mean, certainly the stuff I was talking about at the beginning of this video, being thrown away like an old cardigan, and, you know, this felt like a, you know, she's talking about you can't have both people, when you try to have two, you lose one, for sure, and, you know, this last line she just mentioned here, yeah, is for sure, I mean, pointing to that direction, this is definitely about someone who cheated on the other person, uh, for sure, yeah. And 
so you'd come back to me, you'd come back to me, those lines repeated, and again, she felt like an old cardigan, and, and, and the imagery in the song, too, she comes back to the place where she started the video, like, so we've kind of come full circle now, like, jumping through these fantasy worlds, or th through these memories, or dreams, or whatever this is, and now she's coming back, and, like, she looks very, like, cold, and vulnerable, and all those kinds of things, you know, I think mirroring the way that she feels through the lyrics in the song, uh, as well, or at least do this, whoever the narrator of the song is, if it's not her. Under someone's bed You put me on and said I was your favorite You know what? I just had a, a thought. Uh, I did a reaction to a song, like a long, like 10 or 12, 13 minute video called All Too Well. It was like an extended video, it had Sadie Sink and some actors in it cussing at each other. I had to bleep out some of the language. Uh... <laughs> And I think there was something about a sweater in part of that video, like maybe a cardigan too. Is it related to this? Is it, is, did she have some like sweater or cardigan thing happen in one of her relationships and that's become like a motif in some of her songwriting? I'm not sure, but I think I remember something about that. Uh, Y'all let me know. Y'all, I'm sure somebody will let me know. Alright, so there's some like really weird like dissonant things happening. It doesn't sound like very melodic at the moment. And and like maybe this is that moment of like crisis for the character. You know, if I'm reading an, a, a piece of literature, you always have that dark moment. You know, we're talking about Joseph Camel's The, the Abyss or the moment of crisis at the end before we have to rise out of that and face our demons and defeat the enemy and, you know, save the day and all those kinds of things. And, uh, you know, in her hero's journey here, you know, this feels like the dark moment of crisis. And that musically, that dissonance that we're hearing, that lack of melody right now, now kind of puts the listener there too. That's kind of cool. Oh, we're gonna go out on all this dissonance. Oh man, that's kind of dark. So that was Cardigan by Taylor Swift. You know, I don't really know if I need to do a specific lyric breakdown how I normally do sometimes. I'll talk a little bit about this stuff, but I feel like I kind of, there were some lyrics showing at the bottom of the video there that helped me out, honestly, and, and kind of like led me along. Um, and I feel like I kind of talked through those things as the video went, but man, that was, that was really good. That was, that was one of my, you know, I'm going to say top three. I think I feel safe saying that's top three. I need to listen to it again. I need to go, after I finish editing this video or whatever, go back and just like listen to it again, like all in one go without stopping or anything and just kind of get into the music and feel it. Um, but I really kind of related to what she was talking about. Not that I've ever had been in a relationship where there was like someone cheating or anything, but you know, there were a couple times, like I dated somebody in high school and there was this thing like, you know, she started seeing another guy and those kinds of things. And, you know, the basic kind of stuff that, you know, happens in all kind of young relationships. And, you know, and then that line about, you know, that motif I talked about, about youth and how, you know, when you're young, they don't really listen to you and they don't believe you and they don't give, you know, it's like, it's almost like as if the thought of like young love doesn't really matter. And, you know, you know, I noticed, you know, just as an English teacher, I'm looking at you know, the lyrics at the bottom, and I noticed this is all, like, kind of written, you know, it's all in, written in the past tense, as if this is something that already happened, it's not something that is currently happening, or, or she's still with this person, this is like a, something, like a story from long ago, and so there is a sense that, like, you know, even though you have this heartbreak, and you have this sort of pain, that it goes away eventually, and I don't know, that's almost like an, an uplifting feeling, too, that she's, she was able to get over this, and you know, whether it's her or whether it's a narrator, whoever it is, um, that she was able to get over this feeling of heartbreak. And, and I do think there's like a, you know, there's a silver lining there where this song isn't as dark as, as the ending suggests. You know, that, that sort of dissonant sound at the end, that was kind of a really <laughs> dark way to end the song. And like, 
you know, we end her in this moment of crisis. Like there's no resolution. Like there's zero resolution in this song. Like sometimes you come back and you get this like powerful, strong chorus or something. And like whatever, the, you know, like in the hero's journey from Joseph Campbell that I mentioned, you know, the you have that moment of crisis at the bottom of the journey. But eventually, you know, you face the demons and you and you, you know, face the enemy, the antagonist or whatever. And you win the day and you kind of end up back where you started, how she did at this one moment. But like. I feel like she's in the moment of crisis and she never gets out here. There's no resolution. Maybe somewhere else on the album, maybe the maybe the album, I don't know, this maybe the first track of the album. So I don't have any clue about how this album is broken down. But maybe it actually functions as an actual album, which in this day of like digital releases, we don't really get those a lot of times anymore. It's all about the singles and all these things and people don't even put out albums sometimes anymore. But maybe, maybe this folklore album, I mean, it's called Folklore. Folklore is technically like a story, a narrative, right? So maybe this album tells a story. In this moment that feels, you know, so dark and dissonant right now, maybe there is a resolution later on. You guys tell me about it. And if I need to do something else from Folklore, let me know. If there's more songs like that on that album, I'm definitely going to be worth, you know, that's worth checking out for sure to me. Um, that's worth my time. That was fun. I really enjoyed that. If you enjoyed that reaction, guys, give me a like and a subscribe and share all the Swifties out there. Share it with all your friends. I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm really trying to, you know, my first goal is obviously to hit a thousand subs and uh, I'm not there yet. I've kind of like plateaued. I was getting, you know, 15 or 20 a week and that was, man, I was awesome. I was feeling pretty happy and now, you know, very few. So see what we can do about that. Let's, if I need to do something different, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know about it, guys. But if you enjoyed that reaction, give me a like, subscribe, all those kinds of things. I enjoyed doing it. This was fun. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And as always, guys, be kind to one another. Y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Pigskin and poetry. Coach Hunter reads, reviews, and reacts.